Hey, what's up everyone? I'm John from the Dream Cloud Project and right now we're going to be talking about the NBA playoffs. It starts this weekend. I'm just going to give you my picks of who I think is going to do well, who's going to win and, and all that jazz. Uh, before I get started, just want to give a shout out to Dre Gottams. He's the one who, who brought this, who made this all possible. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below. Um, before I talk really about the playoffs, I want to just give out the season awards. Um, to begin, Coach of the Year, in my opinion, it's uh, Jeff Hornacek, uh, Coach of the Phoenix Suns. No one expected him to be in the playoff race. You know, basically write him off, rebuilding, all that. Eric Bledsoe, new addition, but they kind of got rid of, of everyone else. But they actually did really well. Um, and to go on from that, my most improved player of the year is uh, Goran Dragic, point guard for the Suns. You can kind of say it was a two-headed beast, that point guard with Bledsoe and Dragic, but he definitely was the guy who was leading the team. When Bledsoe went down, he picked up all the slack. Uh, was snubbed for being an all-star, definitely deserved to be an all-star this year. And yeah, just, you know, most improved player. It was really between him and uh, DeMar DeRozan, in my opinion. DeRozan becoming an all-star, leading Toronto, even though they trade Rudy Gay. But I, I give it up to the Dragon. Um, as far as sixth man of the year, a lot of people would probably be like, oh, there's no one you can really, you know, give the award to, but it has to be Taj Gibson, in my opinion. Uh, always finish games for the Bulls, even though Boozer started, Thibodeau always in interviews about why would you keep Gibson in and not Boozer. It's because he brought the energy, just finished well, played great defense, could guard, you know, one through four, basically. And then uh, to continue on now, the Rookie of the Year. A lot of people think it's just a two-man race between Oladipo and Mike Carter Williams. They definitely put up the best numbers for the rookies. As far as rookies who contributed the most, I think Tim Hardaway deserved a lot of what, you know, a lot of praise for being for de being developed so well in a horrible season for the Knicks. The award will go to Mike Carter Williams just because he was so eye-catching. His numbers were insane in the beginning of the season. They basically traded away everyone on that team. Complete rebuilding and, you know, he put up the best numbers for a rookie. And uh, Defense Player of the Year, you know, two-man race again, Joe Camino and Roy Hibbert. In my opinion, it goes to the team with the best defense. Indiana definitely had the best defense. Hibbert anchored the defense. Something that doesn't go on the stat sheet is how many shots he's altered and contested. And I mean, that guy just, he's seven foot two, he puts his hand up, it's so hard to get it over. So I definitely give it to, to Hibbert. And of course, last but not least, MVP. First year, he's gonna get it, but Kevin Durant's definitely deserving of it. His numbers were insane. His player efficiency was off the charts. Scoring, scoring champ, did it all with, you know, averaging nine free throws a game, over 85% from the line. You know, just an efficient player, led his team to the playoffs, second seed overall. They're going to have to give it to him for once. Alrighty, so let's just uh, jump into the playoff race. I'm going to start in, in the West. And, uh, of course, the number one seed overall in the whole dance, San Antonio. Best record. They play the Mavs. I see uh, the Spurs winning this in five games. As talented as Dallas is. As Dallas is, they still have Dirk, Monte, and all that jazz. Uh, San Antonio is just an overall better team. So much more efficient on offense and defense. They have more depth than Dallas, and I think that will definitely play a factor. No one can really guard Tony Parker. Devin Harris would be the best chance that Dallas has to guard him. He comes off the bench. Calderon, as good as he is, I just don't see him staying in front of Parker. And the Spurs just they just do what they got to do. They're a really good team. That's why I number one seed. So I have them in five games beating the Mavs. To go from the 4-5 matchup, this was... The 4-5 is obviously going to be the hardest one to call just because the teams are so evenly matched. And you got the Rockets and the Blazers playing each other. Blazers, the first time in a while that a lot of guys have been in the playoffs, are still a very young team. I'm personally going to give it up to the Rockets in seven I think having home court is really going to pay dividends for Houston's chances. In addition, James Harden is just going to live at the free throw line. Portland doesn't get to the line as much. They don't have as many attempts per game as I think Houston will have. Yeah, Dwight's going to they'll probably do the hack of Dwight and he won't be as efficient. 
but James Harden is just going to live at the free throw line. An important matchup to watch in this series will be Terrence Jones against LaMarcus Aldridge. Aldridge has so much more of an advantage, and I think Portland will definitely expose that. But Rockets depth and Harden living at the free throw line I think will be the difference maker in that series. To continue on the West, we got the 2 and the 7, Thunder and the Grizzlies. As good as the Grizzlies are, and as much as people say, God, no one wants to face the Grizzlies, I, I'm i sorry, but th I think the Thunder are going to handle them in six games. Kevin Durant definitely took his game to the next level, being as efficient as he is. The Thunder ha were able to handle him last season, but even then he was still averaging and seeing numbers. It's just now he has Westbrook back with them. He's going to have more speed on the perimeter and transition, a better defender, the evolution of Reggie Jackson, Serge Ibaka becoming better. They're just going to be able to handle the Grizzlies, I think, in, my, you know, in six games. They're a better team, in my opinion, as good as the Grizzlies are. And then the last matchup, the Clippers and Golden State. I think Golden State really fell short in the last part of the season just because, or they're going to fall short in the playoffs just because of Andrew Bogut going down, broken rib, out for the playoffs. That's going to hurt their chances for sure. That's the only reason why I have the Clippers winning at seven. Golden State matches up with the Clippers very well. The, the backcourt of Golden State, I feel, is superior than the Clippers as a tandem. J.J. Redd, Jamal Crawford, Derek Collison, uh, you know, Clay Thompson, I feel, is taller, better shooter. I think he, he would have the edge there. Steph Curry and Chris Paul kind of do their own thing. But the fact that you don't have Bogut, DeAndre Jordan is just going to have a field day on offensive boards. Blake Griffin's, you know, became a better player, always an all-star. It's just one of those things where I think if Bogut was there, that would definitely want to help Golden State and would have made me want to... Uh, give them more of a shot of winning but you know that's just my opinion I think the Clippers will handle it Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, all their depth Doc Rivers as coach I think they'll move on we'll still continue in the West before jumping to the East and in the 1-4 the matchup San Antonio and the Rockets sorry to hate to burst everyone's bubble but the Rockets I feel will win this in six games, James Harden, I think, will eat up the San Antonio defense. Again, he's going to live at the free throw line. Dwight Howard's going to have a better matchup against the Thiago Splinter, Boris Diaw, any kind of time like that. You'll see a lot of Tim Duncan on him, probably. The matchup where I'm really looking at it in this series is uh, Kawhi Leonard and Chandler Parsons. I think whoever wins that matchup will win the series. Parsons, definitely when he has it going, Rockets are pretty unstoppable. No one can really guard Hardy, in my opinion. They'll probably have more Kawhi Leonard on him. So I think it comes down to Chandler Parsons for sure. And I think the Rockets got it. They have handled them all season. And they're just younger, faster than San Antonio. With the Thunder and the Clippers, again, another very good series. Both very, very, you know, evenly matched. But what it's going to come down to is the Clipper defense against Kevin Durant. And again, I think Kevin Durant has definitely taken that step to to becoming a superstar. No one, I think, could really guard him on their team. And the fact that he has Westbrook back, Westbrook's defense is gonna, you know, definitely hurt Chris Paul. He's big, strong, fast, so Chris Paul is definitely gonna have trouble. Serge Ibaka can is just as athletic as Blake Griffin. Has the length, has a great mid range game. I think Blake Griffin's mid-range games will be exposed and the fact that DeAndre Jordan doesn't have a game outside the paint. So I think the Clippers will expose or the Clippers will be exposed by the Thunder in this series, definitely because of those matchups. I love Oklahoma's bench just because of Reggie Jackson and Lamb and their evolution too. They're not going to win the game, but they're not going to lose the game and I think Kevin Durant will just win the game for him. So to finish up in the West, we have the Rockets and the Thunder. For, for the finals in the West, and again, I have to give it to the Thunder. Both teams shoot the three very well. Both teams have a go-to guy. 
at the end of the games. James Harden and Kevin Durant are going to live at the free throw line. Kendrick Perkins, throughout the history, has been able to play Dwight Howard straight up. I think that defensive strategy is really going to hurt the Rockets in the sense where he won't be as dominant. And then Kevin Durant's just going to, I believe, carry the team to the next level. No one can really guard Westbrook. If Beverly were to somehow take out Westbrook again, go for the knees, you know, God forbid, then, you know, things might be different. But Thunder, better team overall. They have Kevin Durant, MVP in my opinion this season. Now let, let's let's go into the East. Whole different animal in the East. Definitely slower paced teams. The West full of of offense and threes and all that goodness. We start with the, the one eight, the Pacers and the Hawks. Sorry, Hawks, you guys are they're just injured and you know they did what they can this season. But I gotta give it to the Pacers. They'll win in my opinion in five games. They'll win their first two home games. Take care of business on the road. Split that series. Go back game five in Indiana and definitely win. Their home court's been pretty good this year. They had some trouble, but it's playoff time. It's time to stop messing around and really focus. Frank Vogel is a very good coach, and the Hawks just don't have enough at the moment. No, Horford again for the season. They lost him really early. Jeff Teague, I think, will make some noise, but unfortunately, Pacers are just too talented right now. Again, going back to the 4-5. Very tough matchup to, to look at. Wizards have gotten so much better. I feel they have a great team. They're so quick on the perimeter, so athletic. John Wall, an all-star. And again, this is a very tough matchup, but I'm going to have to give it to the Bulls in seven. And the matchup to, re to really watch in this game, uh, f for me personally, is going to be the bench. DJ Augustine and Taj Gibson coming off the bench for the Bulls, I think is better than what the Wizards have to offer with Andre Miller and Al Harrington and, and all those guys, Trevor Booker, Trevor Booker and what have you. But uh, the Bulls, just they just play playoff style basketball all the time. Better defense. They're going to lock down. They're not going to let Wall be as comfortable and let him get in transition too much. I think it will take seven. I think the teams are just going to take care of home court for the most part. Uh, yeah, when it comes down to it, I love Coach Thibodeau and, and his style right now, so I, I have to give it to the Bulls. Moving down with the Heat and Bobcats, uh, the 2 7 matchup, you know, LeBron's going to do his thing. It's playoff time. It's He's still, if not the best player in the world, the second best just for this season, just because of how Kevin Durant's been playing. But the Bobcats, you know, they made the playoffs. I love Kemba Walker. Al Jefferson was a great addition. Very underrated free agent signing this season. This offseason, excuse me, the, the one that just happened. But the Heat, they're just too good. Too much talent, too much depth, too much LeBron. Uh, I think the games will be closer than what most people expect just because of Al Jefferson. But the Heat will just, they'll get it done. They'll find ways. That's why they've been winning. That's why they're going for a 3 peak. So I do, I do have the Heat in uh, in six games winning that. I think the Bobcats will sneak out a couple, couple, couple victories. The Raptors and the Nets. The Nets totally revamped their roster from from the beginning of the season, and the Raptors first playoff team in, in a in a very in, you know in a good long while since Bosch used to be there. Uh, this is a good matchup. I think it's going to be really exciting to watch. But in the end, I do think the Nets will handle it. I do see the Nets winning in six games. So many veteran guys that have, that have been there, that won championships and just know how to play in, in the playoffs. I think that leadership from, you know, the Kevin Garnett, Daron Williams, Paul Pierce and all of them, Joe Johnson's been there a lot. I think that that's just going to be too much for the Raptors. They're too young. It's good for DeMar DeRozan, Lowry, Amir Johnson, guys like that, even Valentinus to get into the playoffs and experience that. It'll be good for them. They're still very young. Nets, I think, will just have it just because of all their experience in the playoffs. And uh, let's go back to round two, the Pacers and the Bulls. Two defensive-minded teams, two teams that play, you know, low possession, low scoring, all that jazz. In the end, I have to give it to the Pacers. I see them winning this in six. 
as good as the Bulls are, as great as their coaching is, Pacers just have more talent offensively. Paul George, an All Star, could get his. He's gonna get the dirty buckets. I don't see the Bulls having really someone to get those dirty buckets. Something that Derrick Rose would have done for them if he had come back, played the whole season, been healthy, been stronger. You know, unfortunately, it just comes down to talent in the end. Who gets the dirty buckets? And uh, home court, I think, will will help the Pacers out a lot more. Bulls are gonna make it very tough for them. I don't see this any like blowouts between them. It's just the Pacers in the end find a way to get it done. Though the Nets beat the Heat every game in the regular season, again it is playoffs. Dwayne Wade wasn't playing for, for all those games. And LeBron, he's gonna make it tough. He's 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 gonna do his thing. So in this I do have the Heat in seven. I think it will take every game for the Heat to win this series. Uh what it, what it comes down to is LeBron versus the defense. As good as Pierce and Garnett have been uh, in throughout history against LeBron and beating him when he used to be on the Celtics, they, I just don't think that they'll have what it takes to, to stop him again. He knows what it takes to win. He knows how to slow the game down. He knows when to get a shot, when to pass, and all that. More depth, better three-point shooting in my opinion. So I, I really think the, the Heat will, will make it. Everyone wants this. You know, this is going to be what, what it takes to see who's, who's going to make it to the finals. Heat and Pacers. Pacers got what they wanted. They wanted the home home court. They're number one seed. They're bringing in the Heat. Who do I got winning? I'm giving it to the Pacers personally. Last year when the Heat went on that run 27-2, Basically, you know, 27 game win streak. They showed that they have what it takes to turn it on, that there is an on switch, that we are the most dominant team, that everyone needs to fear us. I don't I don't see that. I didn't see that this year when I watched them play. Dwayne Wade, yeah, he's been resting. He's trying to get healthier. He's doing his thing to, to play in the playoffs. That's when it counts. I don't think. Uh, He's, he's going to be able to, to match up with Lance Stevenson, in my opinion. I think that's the matchup that everyone needs to, to, to pay attention to, is Lance Stevenson versus Dwayne Wade. You know, Paul George, LeBron, they're going to go at it. The depth is about even. Uh, Watson coming off the bench for the Pacers, Luis Scola, even Amami Himi, he brings the energy. You know, he'd have three-point shooting. That's where the, the Pacers might be hurt, is that their three-point shooting may not be as efficient. However, when it comes out to defense, Grinding it out, playing to your abilities. I think the the Pacers will have the Heat's number this year. It's just one of those things where you let a good young team develop over time. Eventually, they need to beat the champ. Uh, I think this year the Heat go down, unfortunately, and it's gonna make very good finals. The Thunder and the Pacers. Great matchup of two young superstars on the rise, Kim Durant and Paul George. I think it'll go down to the same kind of kind of idea of the young guy needing to learn and experience and develop. So I, as good as the Pacers are and as the are, I think that Thunder will be able to handle this and be the champs. And the matchup to watch is Westbrook versus any and everyone that the Pacers throw at him. I'm sure they'll put Lance Stevenson on him for the majority of, of the series. Someone taller, someone athletic that could, could kind of hang with them. But I think Westbrook's going to definitely eat up the Pacer defense, allow the Thunder to get easy buckets. The Thunder could play small. I think that's what will hurt the Pacers because they can, they still have that defense. They still have rim protection. They still have Kevin Durant, who is the best player this year. Um, in the end, the Thunder, I got them winning it in, in uh, six games. I think they win it on, at Indiana's house, unfortunately. You know, that's what happens when, when you're a young team. You still need to grow. And, uh, yeah, I think that the Thunder, Thunder will get it this year. You know, hope you guys liked what I had to say. Again, this is uh, John Brickett from Dream Cloud Project. Please like and subscribe. Check us out. We got our website, dreamcloudproject.com. And, yeah, that's what I think about it.